Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showcasing a top-down camera. It's a, it's a script that's just been added. To, it's the first camera script being added to the framework. And here's a demo scene I set up. It's composed of a main camera, which has the script. It's got a directional light, it's got a cube, which is the object we're going to follow, and it's got a plane. The plane is just as a reference, because if there's nothing in the world we can't actually see, we can't actually compare the cube's movement to anything if the cube's the only thing in the world. So the main camera has the top-down camera script. It takes a transform as an object to follow, or transform to follow, and it's got an offset and a move speed. And I'll, I'll show you these at runtime. The, the cube is composed of an import, ah, an input script, uh, the keyboard input script, since scripts input keyboard input, and then it's got a movement test script. You notice there's a bunch of uh, properties here. These are more or less debug properties. Uh, what you'll actually do for your game is extend keyboard input or modify keyboard input to suit the particular needs of your game. A keyboard input, as included in the framework, is just a generic input script that uh, is easily modifiable to your needs, but it's included because it really makes testing faster. So with the movement test uh, script, this is what's actually gonna move the cube. It's just a temporary script I created. It's not gonna be included with the framework because it doesn't really solve anything. Later on, I'll probably add actual like controller scripts. Uh, but what movement test does, is it grabs the transform, it caches it, and then it, it clamps the, the horizontal and vertical inputs from the keyboard input script and then it moves the cube's transform position according to those inputs. So I'm gonna go ahead and show the top-down camera now. You can change the offset. The offset is where the camera is going to snap to whenever the object is done moving. So if you want, if you want the cube to be like down here when the object is done moving, if this is where you want the camera to snap to, if for some odd reason your game wants to have this sort of perspective, then this is how you would do it. The move speed is how fast the camera snaps. So if your object moves faster than the camera move speed, there's going to be a bit of delay in the snapping. And then here's the cube. You've got these booleans, uh, like I said, which are just debug booleans. So if I hit right, you notice the object moves to the right, and then that shows up. And like I said, the, the object moves at a different speed than the camera, and so that's why there's the, the weird sort of, uh, the, or the object appears to, to swing really far to one of the, the corners of the sides here. But if we were to increase this move speed to, say, 30, you notice there's a lot less snapping. Um, you'll notice now that the, the cube is, has a noticeable, very noticeable wobble. Um, ideally, in your game, you'll actually have a mechanism animation that transitions from a movement to like a slow down or a, a stop. Say you have like a, a human, and he has like a run animation. Well, ideally, there's a transition to a like a stop animation or standstill animation. And so this wobble, which is mostly because of the the cube, I, I'm just using like a basic cube. Hopefully, hopefully you're using something more. Uh, more polished than this basic cube and will actually handle a slowdown. Um, if you want the camera to completely snap, you set the move speed to some ridiculous value like 100,000. And since the camera will move so much faster than the object actually is able to move, there will be perfect snapping. And well, it'll, it'll appear to basically be always snapped, is what I'm trying to say. But if you do want that sort of sway, like a little bit of sway, maybe. 25 is good move speed. Like a little noticeable sway uh, before the camera snaps. Then you can do that. Do like 23 maybe. It's just whatever you want. But this is the uh, top down camera script. And there's a couple things I want to say before I finish up this video. First is the rotation needs to be set in the inspector. It's not set down here. It's not set in the offset. This is because I don't want to actually duplicate any of the transform information. Uh, your artist should not have to set the rotation up here and then set the rotation toward the target offset down here. The target offset is just literally just 
because the the camera's transform position doesn't matter because we're snapping it to an object. That's why you set it here. Uh, but everything else is is exactly as it should be, just edited in the inspector. We're not duplicating anything down here. So if you set the the object or the camera's rotation to not be on the object, it'll still follow the object, but it won't be very useful um, as you can't actually see the object. So you want to make sure that the camera rotation is actually set properly. The other thing is that this camera can be used for just like a follow camera if you want to. It doesn't necessarily have to be top down. Like I demonstrated, you set the rotation right and it will follow an object. But I don't recommend it for third person games or even like first person games. I'll maybe, I'll, I'll maybe add those cameras later. Um, I've already got some ideas for implementing a third person camera. Uh, that'll be my recommended script over this one if you're actually gonna make a third person game. That's because a third person game has a lot of things that had to be accounted for that top down game doesn't. So for for example, if you have an object in front of you, so you have like a so say you have the cube. Say this is where the camera is. Say there's like a tree like here between the the player and the camera. Uh, if you want to have an actual good third person camera, your camera needs to account for what to do when the player can't be seen because it's obstructed. This camera doesn't do that. This camera is intended for top-down games. And so I that's the main reason why I don't uh, recommend that you use this camera for a third-person game. I recommend waiting until I, I do add a third-person camera that will be smart and actually account for that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the top-down camera script. Thank you for watching.